There are certain defining moments in a person's life. The day he's born, the day he grows hair, the day he starts a business, and the day he sells that business back to Dunder Mifflin. What have I learned from all of this? It is far too early to tell. I just know that I am flying high, and I don't even want to think about it. I just want to enjoy it. Hey, guys. No, no, you're done. It's the temp. Look. Oh my gosh. The temp. Uh, is that the police? Hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what happened. Uh, Ryan's big project was the website, which wasn't doing so well. So Ryan, to give the impression of sales, recorded them twice. Once as office sales and once as website sales, which is what we refer to in the business as misleading the shareholders. Another good term is fraud. The real crime, I think, was the beard. Oh my God, Ryan. Oh my God. I cannot wait to visit Ryan in prison. I'm gonna wear my hottest tracksuit and get my hair done and then be like, hi Ryan. And then all the other prisoners are gonna be like, damn, Ryan, you got a hot ex-girlfriend. Ooh, I would never treated her so bad when I was outside of prison. Right to voicemail. Hey Ryan, it's Jim. You know what? Totally disregard that last voicemail because you obviously have your hands tied. Good luck. Dwight has made me his bestish mensch, which is shrewd for best man. He's putting himself entirely in my hands tonight, and I know for over 12 years I've done nothing but trick and prank him. But tonight, only good surprises. Guten pranken. <laughs> Oh! Surprise! I thought you guys couldn't come. Yeah, but then they moved the panel to the same weekend and the dock crew paid to fly us in. It was kismet. Kismet? Yeah, right. Pam and I came up with excuses for every other weekend. You remember my two lap band surgeries, right? Neither do I. Gutenbrunk number one. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna suck it up. Here we go. And we're gonna go to dinner. Okay. And then we're gonna go to the movies. Sounds good. Hey, helper! Hey. Right! Ah! Right! Go! Ah! 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 <laughs> Pam, please call security. Every day for eight years, I have brought pepper spray into this office to protect myself and my fellow employees. And every day for eight years, people have laughed at me. Well, who's laughing now? In first place, with nine points, it's Aesop's Foibles. <laughs> the Quarantine Bears have seven points. <laughs> Dunder Mifflin A team has four points. All right. The DM Backup team has three points. The Einsteins have eight points. <laughs> Ladies Gaga have five points. <laughs> So, our best chance of hitting our mark is now in the hands and brains of Kevin, Meredith, Aaron, and Kelly. Do I like these odds? My answer is no. Woo! Final round. Last two teams squaring off. I hope you're ready to play doctor. Our question is about the health and the human body. Oh, come on. The standard American analog scale has a maximum capacity of what weight? 300 pounds. Point for the Einstein. <laughs> Here's your final question. Cinephiles, put on your memory berets. This 2001 masterpiece from Gilles Paquet Brenner explores the intricate dynamics of a family in disarray. The title of the film is Le Scafandre et le Papillon. Yes. I'm sorry, no. Over to the Einsteins. May Jolie's chose this. Are you sure? Marianne Cotillard exposes herself a number of times in that film. The Einsteins win it. No! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Look, I know it's easy to say tonight was just a fluke, and maybe it was, but here's a piece of trivia. A fluke is one of the most common fish in the sea. So if you go fishing for a fluke, chances are you just might catch one. Oh, boy. Wait. Why are we stopping? Jim, this isn't on the itinerary. What? Jim, what? Get out. Cut. 
Come on. What? What, are you going to whack me, Jim? No, Dwight. You'll be doing the whacking. A bazooka. You remembered. Of course I did. that in China, there are 56 cities with over a million people. You know how many we have here? Nine. Actually, that's not true. I know the figure you're referring to, and it's a projection of 15 years from now. Thank God. No, no, that is right now. Michael, China is agrarian. Urbanizing fast, you betcha. But still agrarian. Most in terms of land, not population. Come on, Michael. No, <laughs> no, you're wrong about this. Where are you getting this information? I got it from NewYorkTimes.com. Uh-oh, getting nervous, Oscar. Okay, someone look it up. I'm on it, Jim. I'm on it. Guys, it's not worth it, really. Guys, this is not worth our time. Are you watching this? Seriously? Well, are you? I'm sitting right here. Got it. China has 56 cities with a population of over 1 million. The US has nine. Suck it, Oscar. Well, on the plus side, all this worrying about China has made you smarter than Oscar, Michael. Great. I was wrong. I'm wrong. Is everyone happy? <laughs> well, <laughs> so I happen to know more than the smartest guy in the office. So what? <laughs> I don't care. OK, now, where were we before I bested Oscar? Four, three, two, one. Yes! Woo! Woo! After numerous projections that the computer would crush all salesmen in its path, I am very happy to report that our very own Dwight Chirut has crushed his electronic nemesis, if you will, by a whopping 52 reams. Wait, say it, say it again, announce it again. 52 reams! No, 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 it's the first part. Dwight has defeated the computer! Hey, so, what do you think? I did it for you. I didn't ask you to do it for me. You didn't have to. Hey, do you have any men that you can fix me up with? I would like to have a relationship with a man. Um, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Let me know. I never thought I'd say this, but I think I ate too much bone marrow. Hey, Pam. What? Angela's been kidnapped. Phyllis left the door open, and some freak came and grabbed her and fled. Good old Mose. <laughs> they think it was Mose. <laughs> oh, great. He's getting into the spirit of the festivities. Fantastic. He just pulled off a brout and fart. What is that? A ceremonial bridal kidnapping. He will take the bride and hide her at a local pub, and when I find the place, I have to buy everyone drinks. Oh, all right. Oh, Mose. I am here for my bride. <laughs> well, first, buy us a drink. If you want your bride, buy us a drink. If you want your bride, buy us a drink. Very well, drinks on me. Hey! Bartender. Ah. Well, well, well. I heard you bought a bar, Kevin. This one. Now get out. Why did you pick this place? Oh, you did this as a prank. My own bestish mensch. Nope, not a prank. I think it's time for you to bury the hatchet. Pfft, waste of a good hatchet. Okay, just talk. Well, we I heard you say well the first time. I know Dwight misses Kevin. I saw him making his portrait out of a woolly willy. Tomorrow's his wedding day. You can't be anything but happy on your wedding day. It was nothing personal. It's just that you were terrible at your job. You're just saying that to make me feel better. No, really, you were terrible at math and organization, time management, personal hygiene. Your internet searches were so filthy, we had to throw out your computer. Is that all it was? That's it. Come here. <laughs> I missed you, Kevin. I missed you. Oh. Guten Prank. Yes, boss. Guten Prank number three. It's a miracle. She loves him. I don't know about 
love. She loves me. Outside my car, two minutes. All right, something's come up. I gotta go. No, 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 she'll wake up. No, I have something to do. I know what you have to do. Please stay with Cece. Dwight, I've always considered us to be very good friends, great friends. Remember your concussion? I do. But you married my worst enemy. I know. Well, I think enemy's a strong word, because I think we have a really charming back and forth. Enough. Enough. I will require beer and pizza to think this over. Absolutely. From Jim. Well, I don't think that's good. Do it. Uh, what kind of pizza would you like? Surprise me. No. Pepperoni. Insert it in my mouth. Okay. That's not going to make your pizza eating experience any better. Trust me. Don't try me. Jim, just don't think of it as degrading. Think of it as you happen to be moving the pizza six inches Oh, what is this, a, a meatball? Really? <laughs> it's always more fun to mess with Dwight with an audience. That was usually Pam. So now that she's out, I had to find someone else. Turns out that Stanley is quite the comedy fan. But not everything makes him laugh. He has very specific tastes. Through a painstaking process of trial and error, I found out what he likes. Jim, come on. So juvenile. What the? You've been meatballed. <laughs> oh. Are you ready for some meatball? Oh, man. <laughs> this is not very clever, Jim. I know. <laughs> Look for your stapler. <laughs> really, Jim? Really? Very funny. <laughs> okay, good day. What's a hole? 32 meatballs. Good day. <laughs> that idiot's been feeding us for a week. We'll never have to buy meatballs again. <laughs> <laughs> You're not thinking of living in a tent. Could you just mind your own business? Okay, just, I'm just going to say this. You're not going to live in a tent. Oh, God. Come stay with me. You don't want me at your place. I do. Yes. Not forever, but un until you get back on your feet, which won't be long. It's the least I can do. Well... Separate bathrooms. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go get Philip. And we'll get your stuff. Okay. And get the hell out of that place. Okay. Are you allowed to have pets? Oh, I don't. Dunder Mifflin, this is Pam. Uh, just one moment, I'll transfer you. I haven't heard anything, but I'd bet Jim got the job. I mean, why wouldn't he? He's totally qualified and smart. Everyone loves him. And if he never comes back again, that's okay. We're friends, and I'm sure we'll stay friends. We just, we never got the timing right. You know, I shot him down and then he did the same to me, and... But you know what? It's okay. I'm totally fine. Everything is gonna be totally fine. Sorry. Um, are you free for dinner tonight? Yes. All right. Then it's a date. I'm sorry. 
Sorry, what was the question? Uh, yeah, I just got my replacement credit card. Do you want the number? Oh, it's uh, 4793-0032-3313. The security code is 927. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Bye. So do I did take the bait? Use my credit card numbers to send a $200 bouquet of flowers to my wife. From me. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Pam Caso. Sorry I'm late, I had to race across town. Oh, Michael. Wow. You did these freehand? Yep. My God, these could be tracings. Oh, look at this one. Wow. You nailed it. How much? What do you mean? I don't see a uh, price. Um, you want to buy it? Well, yeah. Yeah, we have to have it for the office. I mean, there's my window and there's my car. Is that your car? Uh-huh. That is our building. And we sell paper. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. What? Do you have something in your pocket? Chunky. Do I have? No, thank you. It is a message. It is an inspiration. It is a source of beauty. And without paper, it could not have happened. Unless you had a camera. You ready? <laughs> you kidding? I was born ready. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but we have a little bit of a problem. No, what? The minister just told me that it's tradition for the bestish mensch to be older than the groom. Oh, come on. I've never heard of such a I thing. I haven't heard of it, obviously. But I'm out because I'm significantly younger than you. Not significant as a big well, word. I think, I think you're... Well, okay. Either way. Either <laughs> way. Dwight... I can't be there for you. I'm sorry. Jim. I just really wish there was something I could do. Michael. I can't believe you came. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Best prank ever. Do I get along with my coworkers? Well, first of all, I don't have coworkers anymore. I have subordinates. So, have I gotten along with my subordinates? Let's see. My supplier relations rep, Meredith Palmer, is the only person I know who knows how to properly headbang a motorhead. Oscar Martinez, my accountant, is now godfather to my son. Angela Schrute, my former accountant, is now my wife. My top salesman, Jim Halpert, was best man at my wedding. And office administrator, Pamela Beasley Halpert, is my best friend. So, yes, I'd say I have gotten along with my subordinates.
those boat tickets the day I saw that YouTube video. I knew we'd need a backup plan. The boat was actually plan C, the church was plan B, and plan A was marrying her a long, long time ago. Pretty much the day I met her.